cup is fitting, huh? I've been working my fucking dick off just to do this shit. My fucking dick off. Surgery, personal shit, work, family. People don't get it, man. And anybody who's ever gone under the knife for a sport they love and keep going, man, kudos to you, bro. This is my second time and never easy. You've seen it. First episode, I couldn't even go downstairs. I fucking years. That was like four months ago. Just to do this. Just to kill ourselves for something greater inside of us. I don't know, man. That's pretty cool to me. I'd rather die knowing I did it. I just need it, I guess. It's that warrior mentality. And it's not like I'm not worried about the next set, you know? <sighs> uh, of course it freaks me out. I feel my knee is about to go. But... <gasps> That's the game, you can't have courage, right? Unless you feel that fucking legitimate, this is the last rep, the yoke. The most crushing, ego bruising lift in all of Strongman. Last one, baby. I'm ready. Alright, three, two, one. <laughs> uh, so there's no easy way of saying it, but at the same time, there's no hard way of saying it. It's somewhere in the middle and objectively. So on Wednesday, this is about 17 days out of competition, I was pressing the competition block, which I was lucky enough to borrow for, from Alan for a few days. It's a 253 or so pound lead box, basically. Not too much bigger than, probably twice the size of a shoe box. And I tore my tricep tendon, my left tricep tendon, off the bone. So it's a complete tricep distal tear. Um, that elbow had been giving me some issues, but not more issues than anything else uh, in Strongman. You never could train for a competition at this capacity and this weight, which I would consider pretty elite <laughs> because uh, Alan does make them heavy on purpose, which is something we wanted. So in the middle of pressing this block about, I can't go much higher right now, but about eye level, the bone just kind of, uh, the tendon just kind of flew off the bone. I don't, originally in the first 24 hours, yes, I was very heartbroken. I won't lie, I didn't take it very well this time. I have torn a lot of things in my life. Um, my heart, <laughs> being one of the main ones, tendons and muscles and cracked a lot of bones and split the skin open, but this one hurt the most, I think, and simultaneously felt the best, and bear with me, because I had given absolutely everything to this competition. And that, uh, it always chokes me up a little bit, but in a positive way, because I really can't be pissed off at myself. You know, I've been hurt on the opposite end where I didn't give it my all, or I cut corners, or I drank too much, or, you know, didn't hydrate or diet or whatever, and they didn't rest. Um, and I felt more angry and disappointed with myself. And I tell you that that's a much worse, a more worse feeling to hate that, to not have accountability. Instead, um, I believe I'm just heartbroken uh, as anyone else would when they feel guilt-free. And there is some solace in that, that I really did give it up my all. And I don't think that I've ever trained so hard. I, obviously I've had, and maybe I've just forgotten. Uh, for a strength competition in a very long time. And that is the name of the game. Something my friend Paul said, the iron is undefeated. 
and you can't expect to press ungodly things and try to be the strongest human being in a room at any time, anywhere, in any capacity and expect the devil not to come knocking on the door. You know, I, I posted in, in an Instagram, and it's like, we who fly close to the sun. And it's true. You can ask my close friends. That has been my attitude for a very long time, uh, being Icarus. And that does come with the price. And it's not so much that I didn't really get to touch the sun, because it would have been one thing to tear it in competition. But we all know the risk that we take trying to be this strong and dedicated to what we love to do and to sacrifice bone and tendon and wellness of body and mind to do what you love to do has a unbelievably freeing capacity that only the few in this world will ever understand. And it's to give your, your all to something or someone that you love. And there is a, a feeling of going to sleep at night with this odd grin. And I don't wanna wear this as a badge of honor, but I also will in a sense to give me peace of mind. But I will certainly wear this battle scar proudly, not because I think getting injured is good, but because getting injured when you try your best is everything sometimes. And you have to take that at heart and you have to take that at full speed, as all things with love should be. Going forward, obviously, uh, I'll have surgery tomorrow morning, actually. About 24 hours from now, I should be coming out of my second surgery of the year my third surgery in four, and my fifth major injury in five. Uh, this is what happens, and this is the name of the game for some of us. Some people were genetically gifted never to be hurt, or maybe they're just not as stupid. But if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. I have no fear. I have no regrets. None. Zero. I promise you that if, if I get choked up, it's because I'm a passionate man, not because I'm scared or sad. Um, I also think of the things that I wanted to accomplish and that hurts and to know that I have to wait another year or two for a man that is sometimes intrinsically and purposefully in the present moment and that there is no tomorrow, that concept of time has been forced upon me to humble me and I am proud of that because those are the badges that we do and should wear here. And it's... <laughs> No coincidence, it was obviously a choice. I wore this shirt that I so much use in all capacity of my life. So, after surgery, we have seven days in a soft cast. The first few days suck, they're very painful. Coming home from surgery, as some of you know, and hopefully some of you may never know, is terrible. You feel vulnerable, you feel weak. You will lean on anything and everyone for a day or two, and for people like me, that is uh, the hardest thing in the world. Whether it's emotionally or physically or spiritually, it's very hard. After those seven days, we'll have about six to eight weeks in a cast, which is every week they extend it. So right now I have great mobility and movement, but after surgery, you have to let that tendon heal. It's going to be about seven to eight weeks in that. And in the meantime, I will train every other aspect of my body, not overtrain it. I will go back to rehabbing my knee. I think my knee still has a lot of work to do. I think now with another aspect of my left side uh, incapacitated for a little bit, there's going to be imbalances that surface. So I'll take all of next year. I'm not going to compete in strongman at all. I won't let myself. Um, because I have to earn that back. You know, I, I, I took a hit. I took the L. I got shot down. And we have to earn that right back. In the meantime, though, and I've always said this, strongman is just a way of expressing myself. It is another canvas for you, for me, for all of us in one way or the other. And you're going to get to a certain age here where you realize that there's other ways of expressing ourselves. And I'll do so in life because I think everything is competition. In business, on a personal level, in friends and family, push myself and others as much as I can. But also in the Highland Games, which I love. Um, maybe not as much as strongman or fighting, and maybe one day I'll love more. But it's a great way. It's, I love the technique, the demand. I'm not good at it. My strength does not get me where I want to get, get to. I'm overshadowed by skill and that, that need and that tenacity to be good at something will always be fulfilled by this sport, I think. So I'll dive into that. I still have my good throwing arm. I'll do some good technique work. I have not missed a day to the gym and after my seven days of soft cast, I will continue going forward and what I love to do, which is be an athlete, um, be an example to myself first and if somehow that waters down to others then, then good because courage 
is addicting. After that, we'll get back to work and fixing and do some machine work and I'll be able to post some of that stuff just in light that, not so much for sympathy or empathy, but so people have an understanding of what you can do when you think you're broken. And for those of you who are not broken, um, to be thankful and to keep pushing. So we wanted to not leave this open-ended. I think the first thing you and me decided, Gabby, was to be completely raw and open and honest. Uh, no, I don't think I needed a tricep tendon tear to prove anything. I, don't, I wish it would have never happened, but it did. And when things happen, it is how you stand up to it that proves your worth as a man, as a woman, or as a warrior. And if you're lucky, you can be both. So we're gonna finish this series only temporarily. There's gonna be more adventures coming in next year. I think it gives us an opportunity to push forward in other aspects, and we're gonna talk about other things. But our story never ends, and neither should yours. Bathing in my pop of blood, bare bone and covered in red.